had learned about the toxicity of dye stuff. And during that lecture, I had mentioned that natural dyes are non-toxic. But today, this lecture is related to the medicinal properties of some of the dyes which come under the category of natural dyes. So, instead of being toxic, they are our friends and because they are from the herbal origin and we know that the entire Ayurveda is related to the herbal medicine therapy. Many of these dye molecules also have some therapeutic properties and I have enlisted only six of them here because otherwise the lecture will become very exhaustive and it will not be so much for importance. But to give you an overview that medicinal properties do coexist with the coloration in the natural dyes is what will be emphasized in this lecture. If we take the example of indigo, now we also understand that if there is a molecule, be it synthetic dye, be it uh, natural dye, the toxicity or the non-toxicity is all related to its structure. So, when we try to look at the medicinal property, we should also look at the st chemical structure and make a correlation because this is a scientific uh, approach to understand any situation. If we take the example of indigo, indigo dyed fabric imparts many medicinal effects. It is known that dyed fabric with natural colors imparts some or all the activities mentioned below due to close proximity of to the skin. The indigo dyed fabric is also sedative and calming. It is said to promote intuition. Of course, these are a few things which are you know just um, an extension of what kind of medicinal effect it may have. But nevertheless, you, if you and I wear an indigo dyed dress, we definitely feel happy wearing it. It is a color which soothes our temperament. Indigo may be useful in controlling bleeding and abscesses. The Cherokees, a tribe of the early settlements of America, used the plant as a source of blue dye for their clothes. Some Indian tribes used it for medicinal purposes. So, these are all the information that I have collected from the folklore medicinal books or journals or some from the internet, but I have just compiled to make you understand that these medicinal properties are an attribute with the natural dyes. The Osage, another tribe made eye wash from the plant. The Cherokees would make a tea from it. A hot tea was taken as a purgative and a cold tea to prevent vomiting. A pulverized root or hot tea was held over a sore tooth to relieve pain. Indian children would use the dried pods with loose seeds inside as rattles. Thus, the plant seems to have many beneficial effects. Now, if we try to look at the chemical composition of the glycoside indican and the indigo tin, which is the final indigo molecule, dye is obtained by from the processing of the plant's leaves. They are soaked in water and fermented in order to convert the glycoside indican naturally present in the plant to blue dye indigo tin. So, there is an oxidative process where the glucoside or the glycoside goes away and the two molecules join up at the CC bond. So, this is the structure of indigo dye. Different medicinal properties that were observed by various uh, people all over the world have been that different medicinal properties observed by folk medicine practitioners, Ayurvedic doctors and scientists have been. It is effective in eliminating toxic substances, dispelling heat and dampness, diminishing uh, inflammation and swelling uh, also relieves pain and itching. So, these are some of the very, very uh, you know common effects of 
using indigo dye. It has its antifungal, anti-cancer and antibacterial effects. A natural indigo plant dye diaper is provided to obtain antimicrobial, sterilizing and deodorizing effect and treatment effect of atopic dermatitis by directly using fresh extract of the natural dye plant. A, in, a decoction of the root is used in the treatment of cough. So, you see it is also good for cough, it is used for you know uh, smearing it on the diapers of the children, why? Because it has an antibacterial and antifungal and is very good for atopic dermatitis. The root is dried, ground into powder and applied externally in the treatment of pain in the chest. So, it was also done by some of the Ayurvedic uh, practitioners or folk uh, medicine practitioners that this kind of application helped in the chest pain as well. Indigo has rather a mixed press for its medicinal virtues. One author says it is so astringent that it is not fit to be used internally. It is only used externally as a plaster applied to the region of the spleen and as an ointment for ulcers, inflammation and to staunch bleeding. However, it is widely used internally in Chinese herbal medicine uh, therapy. You know Chinese have a very enriching uh, traditional herbal therapy just like our Ayurveda, where high doses are often employed in order to maintain high levels of active ingredients. So, indigo was applied both in Ayurvedic that is the Indian herbal medicine system as well as Chinese herbal medicine system. The leaves are antibacterial, anti-cancerous, antiviral, astringent and febrifuge. It controls a wide range of pathogenic organisms including viruses. It is used internally in the treatment of wide range of disorders including meningitis, encephalophyte, uh, mumps, influenza, erysipelas, heat rash, etc. This is also used medicinally, particularly in the treatment of high fevers and convulsions in children, coughing of blood and as a detoxifier in inf infections such as mumps. It is used in the treatment of fevers, pyrogenic inflammation in influenza and meningitis, macula in acute infectious diseases and mumps and epidemic parotitis. So, you see many, many diseases have been treated by indigo. It not only has the antifungal, antibacterial, anticancerous, antiviral effect, but also for internal and external applications for bleeding spleens and, uh, spleens and so on, they have been used extensively. So, obviously the people have got benefited because of its medicinal property. How good is the indigo dye? Both the leaves and the roots are used in the treatment of pneumonia. The root and the whole plant have anti-cancerous properties, whilst extracts of the plants have shown bactericidal properties. A decoction of the root is used in the treatment of coughs. The root is dried, ground as a powder and applied externally in the treatment of pain of the chest. While indigo, a decoction of the root being used as an antiseptic wash for wounds and skin complaints. Modern research has shown that this acrid bitter herb stimulates the immune system and is particularly effective against bacterial infection. So, that works what is um, making it as an antibacterial uh, agent. Tea made from the roots is cholagog and emetic, febrifuge and purgative. The fresh root is also considered to be antiseptic, astringent and laxative. The infusion is used in the treatment of upper respiratory infections such as tonsillitis, pharyngitis and is also known in treating infections of the chest and gastrointestinal tract and skin. So, practically 
it has a very enriching medicinal property as what we have learned through these few slides. More benefits from indigo, the plant antimicrobial immune stimulated properties combat lymphatic problems when used with detoxifying herbs such as acritum lapa. It helps to reduce enlarged lymph nodes. While indigo is frequently prescribed in the treatment of chronic viral infections or chronic fatigue syndrome, a decoction of the root soothes sore or infected nipples and infected skin uh, conditions. When used as a mouthwash or gargle, the, the decoction treats mouth ulcer, gum infections and sore throat. So, it is even good for mouthwash. So, therefore, it can be taken internally as well. The fresh root including the bark is used to make a homeopathic medicine. This has a limited range of action, but is used specially in the treatment of certain types of flus. So, from the ranging from flus to chest pain to all kinds of antibacterial, antiviral, anti-cancer uh, uh, kind of uh, diseases, one can see that it has a wide spectrum of effectivity on different types of uh, ailments. Coming to the second dye which is catechu or kach, catechu dyed fabric impart many medicinal effects. It is not only the dye, but even the dyed fabric also has lot of medicinal property. It is known that dyed fabric with natural colors impart some or all the activities mentioned below due to close proximity of the skin. Thus, the plant seems to have many beneficial effects. But before we understand the effects of these um, molecules, we need to understand the structure. As what I said, it is all related to the structure, be its dyeing property, be its medicinal property, be its any property, it has to do with the structure of the molecule. Chemical composition of catechu, successive treatment of catechu with ether and absolute alcohol abstracts the two principal constituent namely uh, from 13 to 33 percent of crude catechin also called as catechuic acid and from 22 to 50 percent of uh, a peculiar tannic acid called the catechu tannic acid. Besides these other compounds present are pyrocatechin, while fluoroglucin and protocatechuic acid are produced by fusing it with the caustic potash. By the action of sulfuric acid, catechuritin is produced. Quercetin was obtained from the aqueous solution of catechin. Pyrocatechin or catechol may be obtained from many tannins and extract by means of destructive distillation. So, the main component is the catechin, quercetin and catechuic acid and uh, catechu tannic acid. These are the main components of catechu. And the structures here are as you would see, it has uh, uh, a typical flavonoid come flavon, uh, flavon kind of structure with lot of hydroxy groups all gathered epicatechin and uh, epigalactocatechin. These are all condensed tannins and whereas these are catechin and uh, festidiol, these are all just single single molecules. Different medicinal properties that have been observed in catechu by the folk medicine practitioners, Ayurvedic doctors and scientists is that catechu has antimicrobial activity. According to the principle of traditional Chinese medicine, catechu has a bitter, astringent and neutral properties. Its main properties are to drain dampness, stop bleeding, clear the lungs and transform phlegm. Catechu is used to treat sores, stop infections and quench one's thirst. Some cultures use catechu as a type of mouthwash and to treat oral ulcers. Externally, catechu can treat conditions such as hemorrhoids and eczema. Catechins have significant antioxidant 
and antimicrobial effects. It is considered to be most uh, one of the best antioxidants. The antioxidant capabilities are evaluated in terms of ascorbate equivalents by different methods. The extract restores antioxidant enzyme superoxidase that is SOD from the radiation including damage. So, it has its own different spectrum of reactivity and medicinal property. It is not the same as what we saw in the case of indigo, but in this class of compound that is the flavone class of flavonol class of uh, compounds, the condensed tannin types of compounds have a very common kind of antioxidant antimicrobial activity. And therefore, these are very good substrates uh, for medicinal properties. More utility of catechin, acacia which is the uh, botanical name of catechu has a considerable my antimicrobial effect. A survey shows that they are used as chewing sticks in various parts of the world due to its antimicrobial effect and hence considered as valuable ingredient for dental care preparations. Due to the presence of toxifolins, it has antiviral, anti-inflammatory and antioxidant activity. A medicinal ex extract of Scutellaria baculensis and catechu acts as a dual inhibitor of the cyclooxidase, oxygenase and 5-lipooxygenase to reduce inflammation. So, in conjunction with another plant, the catechu plant shows very different kind of activity also. Now, coming to the third plant that is Rubia cordifolia. I have taken chosen these very important common natural dyes that is indigo, catechu and now manjist which is called Rubia cordifolia. Why? Because they are being used most popularly from uh, ancient times to the present time. Rubia dyed fabric impart many medicinal effects. It is known that dyed fabric with natural colors impart some or all the activities that are mentioned. But before we go on to understand the activity part, we will try to look at the chemical composition as I have what I have mentioned that the medicinal properties are direct reflection of the chemical moieties that are present. Now, we have also learned by now that rubia is chiefly made up of six dyes of which alizarin and purpurin are the two main color producing principles which exist in the root partly free but mostly combined with sugar in the form of more or less easily decomposable glucosides. The alizarin glucoside is the rubiaethric acid or rubianic acid and it itself probably is a decomposition product of rubian. In the formation of purpurin from the glucoside, an intermediary product is pseudopurpurin or purpurin carbonic acid, which also exists in free condition. Upon uh, exposure to the air, it loses carbonic acid and becomes purpurin. Additional constituents of rubia are sugar 10 to 15 percent, pectin, albuminous bodies like yellow xanthine and rubiochloric acid which is a glucoside yielding an undesirable brownish green coloring matter and as to the other coloring principle of mangist is mangistin and purpuroxanthine. So, these are the various components which make the mangist dye or the madder dye, the rubia dye as the red orange colored dye. And these are the various structures, you will see that they only differ in the uh, functional groups that are present on the ring on the right hand side. One has ortho hydroxy, the other one has meta hydroxy, then the third one has meta hydroxy, but there is a methyl in between. The fourth one has meta hydroxy, but uh, uh, you know at the ortho position is the carboxylic acid, 
The fifth one has three hydroxy groups, uh, two para and one ortho and the four, uh, sixth molecule has uh, three hydroxy and one carboxylic group. So, all these functionalities actually make them different moieties altogether. Now, because of these the medicinal properties also vary. Rubia has antimicrobial activity, it has medicinal qualities as it was used anciently to, remed, uh, to remediate health problems and can be still used today. Madder is mainly used for urinary tract problems. Those who use it will quickly realize how powerful it can be in turning urine red. The roots are alterna alterative, anodyne, antiphilogistic, antitusive, astringent, diuretic, expectorant, styptic, ton tonic and vulnerary. They have an antibacterial action inhibiting the group of the bacteria such as Staphylococcus and uh, various um, uh, species of Staphylococcus as well as Pneumonococcus also. Other utility of Rubia dye, they are used to lower blood pressure. The roots are used internally in the treatment of abnormal uterine bleeding, internal and external hemorrhage, bronchitis, rheumatitis, rheumatism, stones in the kidney, bladder and gall as well as in dysentery. Stems are used in Tibetan medicine where they are considered to have bitter taste and a cooling potency. Febrifuge, they are used in the treatment of blood disorder and spreading fever of kidneys and intestines. So, that is what the rubia dye can extend if taken orally because as I told you these dyes are not only non-toxic but have very pronounced medicinal effects. Coming to the fourth dye which is yellow in color which is obtained from the uh, rind of the uh, fruit called punica granitum or anarca chilka. This dye also it has a lot of medicinal property because it, it is a, a very soothing color, yellow color, it is very popularly used. What are the structures of the chemicals that are comprising in this yellow dyed material? The main substances responsible for the medicinal property are the elegitenin and also the punique calagin. So, this allergenic acid and punicalagin are the two condensed kind of molecules with several several hydroxy groups and that is what imparts the medicinal property to the uh, dye. Some documented medicinal properties for punica are that in Brazil, uh, punica is used as a popular medicine. The pharmacological activities attributed to the epicarp of the pomegranate fruit punica granitum lin, which belongs to punicaceae family. This is a shrub or small tree native to Asia, where its several parts have been used as an astringent hematostatic as a remedy for diabetes and as an anti uh, helminthus spe especially against tapeworms and for diarrhea and dysentery. So, these are the various uses of punica dye. In Brazil, the fruit also has been further used and is known as Roma and are used for the treatment of throat infection, cough and fever. There are several commercial phyto preparations in Brazil containing extracts from promogenate. Although many reports on the antimicrobial activity of pomegranate exist in the literature, none of them relate such activity with its chemical composition. For the validity of the product, it is necessary to define chemical markers, substances that when present in the preparation actually have been attested for their quality because it is very important to first understand what the dye contains and then only those compounds only must be contributing to these medicinal properties can be truly marked out. But you know in Brazil there are some compositions available 
which do not give any chemical markers. So that is a bit of a dissuade, uh, dissuading situation because it does not give a clear picture whether it is the same chemical or some other uh, concoctions have been added to the uh, so to called uh, punica dye con, uh, decoctions. If we try to look at the medicinal properties, punica is an antimicrobial activity. The promogranate of punica has a long history of herbal use dating back even before 3000 years. All parts of the plants contain unusual alkaloids which is called as pelletarines which paralyze tapeworms so that they are easily expelled from the body uh, by using a laxative. The plant is also rich in tannin which makes it an effective astringent. It is used ex externally in the treatment of mouth scores, uh, sores and throat infections. The other utility of punica are the whole plant but in particular the bark is antibacterial, antiviral and astringent. This remedy should be used with caution, overdoses can be toxic. Now you see that any compound if it is administered in a uh, dosage which is very high and which is far beyond the assimilation rate of the body, it will become, it will come into the category of toxins. So that has to be kept in mind that overdoses should be avoided. The flowers are used in the treatment of dysentery, stomach ache and cough. Along with the leaves and seeds, they have been used to remove worms. The seeds are demulcent and stomachic. The fruit is a mild astringent and refrigerant in some fevers and especially in biliousness. So you see, they, it has its own medicinal spectrum of uh, activity and it has been used by different uh, class of people and these were the utilities of Punica. Uh, which were observed. It is also uh, cardiac and stomachic. The dried rind of the fruit is used in the treatment of amoebic dysentery, diarrhea, etc. It is specific remedy for tapeworm infection, infestation. The dried pericarp is decocted with other herbs and used for the treatment of colic dysentery, leucoria, etc. The food extract is also very useful in retardation of growth of the prostate gland. So there are many, many such observations where the decoction of punica uh, fruit rind has been done, taken internally and these were the observations that it is effective in these kind of medicinal uh, situations. Coming to the lac dye, this dye is not from the plant origin, but nevertheless it comes under the category of natural dye and it is actually obtained when stick lac is crushed and washed with water. The water soluble lac dye mainly consisting of various derivatives of lacaic acid appear in the waste water after the processing. Concentrating the dye from the effluent yields about 1 percent of the lac dye. The lacaic acid has a basic structure of anthroquinoid. It is a mixture of minimum 5 closely related compounds of anthroquinone origin. So you see that lacaic acid is also again not one dye. Lac dye is not just one dye, just the way we saw that manjist or rubia is not a one dye. It has 6 components. Similarly, this lac dye has uh, its medicinal properties related to the lacaic acid. The structure elucidated for lacaic acid A, C, E will show the presence of one nitrogen atom. Lacaic acid C is an amino acid derivative while lacaic D is a carboxylic acid derivative. Lacaic B is an alcoholic derivative. And the 3 hydroxy group on the anthroquinoid skeleton is responsible for chelation with the metal ion of the mordant. Actually, lacaic acid, which is responsible for dyeing, 
is a hydroxyquinone carboxylic acid and the elemental analysis shows that it has 51.4 percent carbon, 4.5 percent hydrogen and 1.97 percent nitrogen and it has a ashless of about 0.15. These are the various structures of the lachaic acid and one can see that basically it is made out of this kind of uh, aromatic system with carboxylic acid groups and OH and carbonyl group which make it a very good dye substrate. As I told you that dye substrate are related to the fact that how much conjugation can occur. Even the medicinal property is related to the structure. Utility of lac dye. Lac dye is, an ac is acidic in nature and is generally present as its sodium or potassium salt which are completely soluble in cold water. On the other hand, pure dye is soluble in boiling water. Pinini in 550 BC mentioned that medicinal properties of lac in his book. That means it ages back to 550 before Christ time. Lac dye has antimicrobial properties of the natural dyes and it works against gram negative bacteria. Lac dye was non-mutagenic in MS test using 5 strains of salmonella with or without metabolic activation. No cytotoxicity or mutagenicity was observed in the Chinese hemester lung cells exposed to lac dye. So, it is that way non-mutagenic dye and therefore, now it is clearly showing the non-toxic effect as well as its medicinal property has already been documented way back. A clastrogenic effect was observed in the bone marrow cells of mice that had been treated with this lac dye injection or even with oral uh, administration. Lac dye a byproduct of the shellac industry has been considered for general use as a food coloring agent. So, if it is taken orally and if it is a food dye, obviously it has its own benefit of the medicinal aspect as well as of the dyeing aspect. Lac dye has major component lachaic acid. It is found to have no mutagenic activity as assessed by the, these tests which are done on salmonella. Coming to the last dye of these series, because I had chosen 6 main series, uh, 6 dyes all varying in different color, indigo blue, manjist red, catechu brown, punica yellow and lac was purplish and now rheum is greenish yellow. Rheum dyed fabric impart many medicinal effects too. I have chosen these, but there are the list is exhaustive, but these are the common colors that are used. That is why I chose them for the study of or for the understanding of their medicinal property. If one tries to look at the chemical composition, the main phytochemical present in the extracts of the rhizome and the roots uh, derived from rheum imodi wall are chrysophanic, cycion, imodin, beta catechin, imodin 8 O, beta D glucopyranocide and chrysophanol 8 O, beta D glucopyranocide. The bioassay guided chemical examination of the rhizomes of rheum imodi resulted in the isolation of two, two new oxythrone esters that is the rivandrin chinone 1 and rivandrin chinone 2, a new anthroquinone ether rivandrinone 3 and a new anthroquinone ether rivandrinone 4 were also isolated. So, this is the kind of chemical composition of rheum. And thus, they are the ones which are responsible for the coloration as well as for the medicinal property. If we try to look at some of the simpler molecules, imodine and chrysophenic 8 beta D glucoside, this is how they look like. 
One is an anthroquinoid, I mean both are anthroquinoid dyes, but one has a glucoside linkage and the other one has only hydroxy and methyl groups around it. If we try to look at the medicinal properties, Riam has a long and proven history of herbal usage. Its main effect being a positive and balancing effect upon the whole digestive system. It is one of the most widely used herb in even Chinese medicine. As I told you, just like our Ayurvedic system, which is an Indian medicine herbal system, Chinese also have a very enriched herbal system and that also traditional Chinese medicine system TCM also uses rheum as one of its main component. The root are astringent, tonic, purgative and the tuber is pungent, bitter, alexiteric, aminologic, diuretic and it is reported to be useful in bilisness, chronic bronchitis, asthma, sore eyes and bruises. The roots are used to, for chronic constipation. The tuber is used in bilinearness and sore eyes and fever. It is also used as blood purifier. Some more utility of rheum dye which has been practiced is that the root is anti-cholesteroric, antiseptic, antispasmodic anti-tumor, aperient, astringent, cholagogic, demulcent, diuretic, laxative, purgative, stomachic and tonic. So, you see it has many, many medicinal properties. Small doses act as astringent tonic to the digestive system, while larger doses act as mild laxative. The root is taken internally in the treatment of chronic constipation, diarrhea, liver and gallbladder complaints, hemorrhoids, menstrual problems, skin eruptions due to accumulation of toxins. Externally, the root is used in the treatment of burns. A homeopathic remedy is prepared from the dried root. This is used especially in the treatment of diarrhea and in teething children. So, you see that we have taken an overview of the medicinal properties and an overview tells us of uh, just the six dyes that they have a wide spectrum of activity and all the, this medicinal activity is related to the structural components that make the dye.